Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here. Today we're going to look at Leo Marek, Mr. Michigan of 1947. I love these photos, these black and white photos of Leo. These phenomenal lines that he displays. He's got a, such a trim small waist, such beautiful lines flowing from the top to the bottom. Everything flows beautifully. The athletes of the past really knew what it had a what it meant to have a classic physique. Let's talk about Leo Marek, a very unheard of, unknown um, bodybuilder from the late 40s and early 50s. As I mentioned, Leo Marek, at the age of 21 years of age only, won the Mr. Michigan contest in 1947 at only 179 pounds. That's about 80 kilos. He wasn't the biggest guy, but he had a very aesthetic physique. On the night that he entered, he won both the physique contest as well as the weightlifting meet, which I've repeated many times and I'll say it again. Uh, there were many weightlifting meets in combination with bodybuilding competitions back in those days. Now, on the night, as you can see, uh, these are photos taken uh, after the competition. You can see uh, the beautiful flowing lines of Leo Marek. Do we see a distended gut? No. A very trim, a very, uh, you know, tight, trim abdominal section. We see a wonderful um, artistic almost quality of his physique uh, flowing from the very top with that wonderful V taper as we can see from the middle of this, um, of this uh, photo here. Long flowing legs. Phenomenal. Why do I like this so much? And I mean, this, this is just in general with most of these athletes they're not overly uh, developed they look athletic they look human they look like uh, a sculpture that you see in a museum that an artist created this is what I believe bodybuilding should be about not the overly developed gut distended freaks we see nowadays I'm sorry to say um, and this is why I'm making this video on this very unknown bodybuilder because I'm sure many, if, if any, people have heard of him. I don't think any, any have heard of him at all. Um, many of you that haven't. Um, just appreciate the artistic quality of how physiques were developed back then. Not only was Leo Marek a very um, aesthetic and classic um, bodybuilder of the time. Uh, as I mentioned, he was very strong because he used to do uh, different types of workouts during the week. It's rather bizarre actually. Uh, he used to train three times a week. Two of his workouts were really bodybuilding centered, whereas one was uh, really centered around Olympic weightlifting. Let's have a look at this um, very unique way of training of Leo Marek. On day one, he focused on barbell movements, barbell bodybuilding movements that is. Uh, let's have a look as he, at his uh, workout. Two arm press with 145 pounds for 10 reps, 175 pounds then for 7 reps, 200 pounds for 4 reps, and then he would increase the poundage by 10 per set until reaching a maximum of 240 pounds for 1 rep. This is very typical. Uh, the pyramiding uh, method is very typical of the bodybuilders from back then and they really would go all out in their sessions. It's not unusual for them to go for one rep maxes. Um, the squat, he would perform 300 pounds for 10 reps and follow that with 310 pounds for five reps. Um, he would then do bench pressing, 200 pounds only, 10 reps. That's very achievable, even for us uh, modern day naturals. He would then do side bends 70, with 75 pound dumbbells for 15 reps, calf raises, with 200 pounds on his back for 10 reps for two sets. Something called the straddle hop, 225 pounds for 10 reps. Curls, barbell curls. This is all barbells, by the way, with 115 pounds for five, 125 for five, increasing to a one rep max of 160 pounds, which is about, uh, I would guess about 70 kilos. Very strong, very strong. Upright rowing with 125 and 135 pounds for 10 reps each, and pullovers 
with 80 and 90 for 10 reps and then increasing to 120 pounds for one rep. That's just barbells. On the second day after day of rest, he would perform a dumbbell workout. I won't go through all the poundages, but you can see he would perform, perform dumbbell swings, four sets, uh, two arm press with 80 pounds, the incline, sorry, my kids are going nuts, uh, the incline press with 80, 85, and 90 pounds for 10 reps, forward and lateral raises for his shoulders with 30 pounds, and alternate curls and press with 60 pounds. That was a common exercise back then, to curl the weight up to your shoulder using your bicep and then press. Very functional too. Uh, he would then touch his toes, which is a common uh, calisthenic abdominal exercise. 75 touches per hand. Uh, that is like swing. It's more like known as the abdominal uh, twist, actually, the abdominal twist, touching the toes. Then lateral movements, which is flies, would be performed, that, that is dumbbell flies for the chest, uh, with 35 pounds, 45 pounds, and, and 45 pounds again for 10, 10, and 5. Finally, he would perform Olympic weightlifting on his last day of the week, probably Friday, and then follow that up with a general full body conditioning program. Reverse curls uh, with a weight listed, 85, 90 to 100 pounds for five reps. Press behind the neck for his shoulders, 150, 165, and 175 pounds uh, times five reps. Squatting again after all that Olymp Olympic weightlifting, 300 pounds times 10, 310 by five. Rowing for his back, 150 uh, pounds times 10 reps, 160 times 10 reps, and 175 pounds for 5 reps. Leg pressing, 500, 550, 600 pounds for 10. Shrugs, 175 and 200 pounds for 10 reps. Sit-ups, 50 uh, reps. I'm oh, sorry, with 50 pounds, 10 reps for 3 sets. And deadlifts, 350 pounds, 5 reps, 400 times 5 reps, then performed in the stiff-legged version. Can you see the variety of of work that he's doing, barbell work, dumbbell work, calisthenics, Olympic weightlifting, all these different types of exercises. Many bodies, bodybuilders back then even did hand balancing, tumbling, which is kind of gymnastics, and um, worked on the rings. These guys weren't just bodybuilders, they weren't just strongmen, but they were overall athletes. They could do many things, they were functionally strong, amazing, amazing athletes. No wonder they looked like Greek gods. I love these athletes. They look fantastic. They had fantastic workouts and they were naturally strong, amazing. His strength feats, he could perform a military press, press with 240 pounds, a continental press. A lot of you don't know what that is, but that is basically pressing the barbell overhead with whichever way possible. There is no strict way of doing it. So many people would lean back uh, to do this and, and perform it in different ways. But anyway, the continental press he could do with 260 pounds. Squat with 375 pounds. His deadlift was 550 pounds. His curl was 160 max. And he would do a crucifix hold with 60 pound dumbbells on each hand. Amazing. I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. It's been a bit long, but I really wanted to emphasize what an amazing athlete Leo Marek was. Many of you do not know who this guy is, and I hope you have enjoyed it. Um, yeah, if you have, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you for watching. Leave me your comments. Subscribe if you haven't. This is the Golden Era Bookworm, and I will bring many more unknown, unheard athletes um, for you to learn from and for you to, uh, I guess, yeah, to, to enjoy. Thank you very much. Bye for now.